Assalamu alaikum. Um, welcome to webinar series of MPT Foundation. And today it's our presenter is uh, Mr. Shabazz Ahmed. He's a medical physicist in the Department of Clinical Oncology, Nishtar Medical University Hospital from Multan. And he's a PhD candidate and uh, the Fulbright alumnus. Today, he is going to talk about uh, the pathway and the prospects for medical physics career in Pakistan. So, Mr. Shabazz, you can start with your presentation. Thank you. You can start, Mr. Shabazz. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, are you able to listen to me? Is my audio, are you clear? Yes. Yes, we can. Hello. You, uh, you can't hear me? Am I audible? Yes, Mr. Shabazz. Okay. So today we are uh, going to start this uh, very important topic. Um, a very much uh, like thought after and very much looked after topic, which is about uh, the medical physics career in Pakistan and uh, different pathways that can lead you to be a medical physicist in Pakistan, as well as uh, the prospects for medical physics career, like what you can uh, expect and what you can gain by being a medical physicist in Pakistan. Uh, let's start with my introduction. Most of you might already know me. Uh, but let me uh, briefly share about myself. I'm uh, currently a medical physicist at uh, Department of Clinical Oncology in Nishtar Medical University and Hospital uh, in Multan, Punjab, Pakistan. And I'm also pursuing my PhD uh, from Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. I am a Fulbright alumnus. Uh, I spent four years in the US and uh, completed all of my PhD requirements. It's uh, just the dissertation that is pending and I'm working remotely on it. Um, previously, I have been uh, a lecturer uh, of medical physics uh, at Pakistan Institute of Engineering and Applied Sciences, an institute by Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission. Uh, so uh, uh, I joined that institute as a fellow of medical physics. I did my master's of science in medical physics from the same institute. And before that, I did my uh, bachelor's of physics um, in uh, bachelor's uh, uh, of honors in physics uh, from the Islamic University of Bahawalpur. So uh, this presentation uh, here uh, is for educational purpose only. You cannot use it for any commercial purposes. Uh, the slides or other, any information shared here. Uh, and I don't have any financial conflict of uh, interest. Like I haven't been paid by anyone for this presentation. Uh, the data used here, it belongs from various uh, contributors and it's uh, not my property. The references where needed, they are cited and uh, are spoken wherever needed. Here is a brief outline. Uh, we will start with the definition of a medical physics, uh, who is technically a medical physicist. 
uh, we would go through the regulation and definition, and then we would discuss the pathways to becoming a qualified medical physics uh, physicist. Uh, following that, we would discuss about. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, is my voice clear now, or is there an issue? Hello. Okay. Perfect. So uh, uh, we would uh, uh, start with the outline once again. Uh, so uh, we would start the presentation with the definition of a medical physicist, the regulation and the definition, and then we would discuss the pathways uh, that one can follow to be a qualified medical physicist in Pakistan. Afterwards, we would discuss about various career opportunities available in Pakistan. Uh, the graduate programs, the traineeships, and on-job uh, training opportunities will also be discussed. Uh, we would discuss the status of uh, residency and certification. Following that, we would discuss about diagnostic equipment, RT equipment, and any future plans. Briefly, we would touch uh, the opportunities abroad, and we would discuss about the failure modes and effects analysis for medical physics career in Pakistan. Uh, then we would uh, move on to the take home message and uh, my contact details will be shared in the end if you would have any questions. So in this presentation, if you have any question at any point, you can use the chat for uh, raising your question or you can, uh, uh, you can uh, raise your hand and we can uh, take the questions on the fly. But if you can hold the question until the end of the presentation, uh, we would appreciate that. Uh, if there is something that you must clarify during presentation, we also accommodate that. So I acknowledge uh, the following uh, seniors and uh, uh, peers who helped me in pre uh, preparing this presentation. They might not know that I'm presenting here, but they have uh, either directly or indirectly helped me in uh, gathering the data for this presentation. One of uh, them is my advisor, Professor Jaiber Mister from USA, Dr. Abrar Hussain, uh, Dr. Sir Rao, Ma'am Arisha Zaman, uh, Dr. Saeed Buzdar, Dr. Bilal, Dr. Basim Saab, uh, Dr. Amjad, uh, Aleem Qureshi from US, Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. Abdul Qadir Jangda, um, and Osman Chaudhary, Asad Yusuf, Mia Hasibullah, Dr. Baksh, Khuram, Saad, uh, Shahzeb, and Wajad. Because I'm sharing all of these names, you might get bored, but these are all people who are actually presenting with myself. So they, they helped me in gathering the data. Uh, then uh, moving on, uh, let's look at the definition of a medical physicist. Um, uh, who is a medical physicist? Let me make it full screen. Uh, I'm using the presenter view, okay. Um, this is the definition of a medical physicist um, as per the regulation of Pakistan, which are made by Pakistan Nuclear uh, Regulatory Authority. The regulations on radiation protection, Part 904, it defines that a medical physicist is a one who has an MS in medical physics from uh, HEC recognized university. And also uh, he or she has one year practical experience in addition to that one, uh, uh, one year uh, uh, in addition to that master's uh, of uh, science in medical physics. You can also be qualified to be a medical physicist if you have an MSc or BS in physical sciences. Now that's a little broad, like if you have a BS in mathematics, a BS in any of the physical sciences, uh, not only in physics, uh, from an HEC recognized university, and then you have a two years practical experience in radiotherapy, then you would be called a medical physicist in radiotherapy. So um, uh, uh, medical physicists usually serve in three or four different areas. I just chose three here, but um, uh, there is another uh, category of medical physics as well. First one is medical physicist in a radiotherapy department. The second one is a medical physicist in nuclear medicine. Uh, the third one is a medical physicist in radiology department. Uh, the fourth one is a medical physicist in industry or in health physics setups like nuclear power plants, defense, anywhere where radiation is used and you need radiation protection. Uh, for those who don't know about medical physics, uh, we, the definition of medical physics is coming and the, these fields and the roles would be defined in the next slides. Uh, so uh, the definition of uh, International Atomic Energy Commission is, uh, International Atomic Energy Agency is the, that the medical physicist is an expert in physics and instrumentation with a good knowledge of the relevant uh, biology and uh, provide support for, uh, uh, provide the technical support for therapeutic and diagnostic medical procedures and treatments uh, as a member of the team of healthcare professionals. Um, 
and the definition of uh, uh, qualified medical physicist as per American Association of Medical Physics, uh, the American Association of Physicists in Medicine technically, uh, is that a qualified medical physicist is an individual who is competent to independently provide clinical professional services in one or more of the subfields of uh, medical physics, therapeutic medical physics, diagnostic, the nuclear medical physics, medical health physics, and MRI physics. So uh, let's look at the entry concept of medical physics. It's basically application of physics to medicine, as the name says. Uh, so in this uh, special uh, specialty, you actually apply the physics that you learned throughout your career in the uh, medical setups, like in therapy and diagnostics, wherever primarily there are radiations, like X-ray, uh, like CT, MRI, uh, radiotherapy departments, uh, MRI, uh, is like uh, part of diagnostics, uh, CT, the CT graphic tests, uh, those all things they contribute to diagnostics. And in therapy, therapeutics, uh, we use like x-rays, gamma rays, and nuclear medicine as well for uh, therapy of the patient. So basically we use the basic physics concepts like accuracy, precision, uh, quality, safety for radiations, and concepts like that for welfare of the patients. So uh, let's move on for uh, yourself to be a qualified medical physicist in Pakistan, the pathway is uh, the very first step to do that is to do a four year bachelor's in physics. Now, technically you can be a medical physicist by doing a uh, bachelor's in mathematics. But I would recommend if you have uh, a clear idea of uh, uh, that you, are, you want to be a medical physicist uh, right after your intermediate or FSC or A levels, uh, then you should opt for uh, bachelor's in physics because that would be uh, like you would have uh, a straightforward pathway to be a medical physicist. Now, once you are done with that, uh, you would uh, join as a either join as a trainee physicist, whether on job or in a certificate program, um, or you would do a master's in medical physics. Uh, for these two pathways, if you join as a trainee physicist, then a trainee or internee physicist, you can get promoted as a medical physicist. Uh, after certain uh, months or years, you can get that. If you do a master's in medical physics, then you can directly join as a medical physicist. You would still be a trainee because you have to complete like one year training, uh, or you can opt for a structured training, which is a residency in medical physics. So you would uh, gain practical experience in the residency, and then you can become medical physicist. These two areas, the residency uh, leading to uh, being a medical physicist is marked as a gray because it's a uh, not yet uh, available in uh, Pakistan, it's in planning phase. Uh, we would go through that as well. So um, now we would go through the uh, medical physics career opportunities in Pakistan. We have Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission leading this uh, phase where uh, we have like different hospitals uh, uh, where you can get uh, inducted as a medical physicist if you have done a master's of science in medical physics from uh, Pakistan Institute of Engineering and Applied Sciences, which is known as PAS. If you have done a master's of science in medical physics from that institute, you can join uh, the Atomic Energy Commission hospitals. Uh, sorry, I had uh, turned on this uh, break after every 20 seconds to turn my eyes away uh, just for uh, taking care of my eye health. And uh, it's good for you as well to look away from screen at this time. Uh, we would continue as soon as this message goes away. So, Okay, so uh, the second opportunity is Pakistan Nuclear Regulatory Authority. For that also, you need to have an MS in medical physics from PIAS. Uh, for Atomic Energy Commission, we have uh, 19 or 20 nuclear medical centers throughout Pakistan. Some of them I have named here. Uh, others you can find on their website or you can talk to someone who works there. Uh, Kiran in Mole, uh, AEMC Karachi, Muri, Jinam, Pinam. You might have heard these names. They are all uh, names on the name of females because these institutes uh, were uh, uh, planned and constructed in, at a time when there was uh, uh, awareness about uh, breast cancer going on. So they thought to name the hospitals with the name of women so that the women, they feel comfortable in going to those hospitals and getting themselves diagnosed and treated. So uh, the other opportunity within Atomic Energy Commission is the Health Physics Division, uh, which is in Penn Stack, uh, Pakistan Institute of Nuclear Science and Technology in Islamabad. They have a secondary standards dosimetric laboratory, SSDL. When you be a medical physicist, you would be familiar with it. 
then they have a radiation dosimetry group who send like film badges for radiation protection purposes throughout Pakistan. They provide that services. Then there is an isotope production division. Uh, they produce, produce different isotopes used in di diagnostics or therapy. Then uh, another one is Pakistan Atomic Energy Research Reactor, which is closely linked with the IPD or Isotope Production Division. Uh, they, that reactor is actually used for producing some of the isotopes. Following that, in Atomic Energy Commission, we have nuclear power plants, we have other establishments. But for Atomic Energy Commission, majorly the hiring is through through PIAS, you join uh, PIAS on fellowship, you complete your master's with full funding, and then you uh, join uh, uh, the uh, job as a, a medical physicist or as a junior or senior scientist uh, in uh, junior scientist in, in Atomic Energy Commission, which can actually lead you to being a senior scientist later on. In government hospitals, actually, we have limited hospitals that uh, offer uh, like the career opportunities. Most of them actually uh, offer the job through their patient aid societies because, unfortunately, in government setups, the career of medical physics is not very well established. Uh, like you can imagine, in uh, in in government hospitals in uh, in Punjab, in Sindh, uh, in Balochistan, in anywhere, I think KPK is the first one to to that initiative. You don't find a actual job as a medical physicist being advertised uh, uh, in the public service commission jobs. Very dear, very dear. So uh, JPMC Karachi and GIMS or PAQSG Institute of Medical Sciences in Gambart, uh, the Dow University of Health Sciences, CMH, and the National Medical University Hospitals. These are some of the names, and also some of the institutes of cardiology and also PKLI in, Karachi, in Lahore. Uh, these are the setups that have medical physicists. Uh, either through government job or through uh, like uh, hired through a society uh, on a private contract or hired as a consultant, uh, not as a medical physicist technically, but as a consultant to work as a medical physicist. Then we have uh, many private hospitals. Uh, the biggest name that is Shah Khanam Memorial Cancer Hospital and Research Center because they have the highest number of medical physicists uh, at their center. They have uh, three locations now. Uh, uh, two are active, Lahore and Peshawar, and the third one, Karachi, is in uh, almost, I think it's uh, uh, kicking off very soon. Then we have Aga Khan University Hospital that's a leader in uh, providing medical physics trainings uh, for trainees uh, that's coming later on. Then we have SIUT, they are also leader in uh, radiotherapy, they, they also started traineeship programs very early in medical physics. Then we have Yakut National Hospital, um, NCCI, which was previously known as NMI, the Neurospinal and Cancer Care Institute. Then we have Dr. Zialdin Hospital. We have Cancer Care in Ryman, Lahore. We have Doctors Hospital in Lahore, Salim Memorial, uh, Gurki Trust Hospital. These are all uh, places which you can uh, like aim for when you're trying to look for jobs in medical physics. Uh, future opportunities, they include uh, Shokat Khanna Memorial Cancer Research Center um, uh, in Karachi, in Bahabalpur, and also Indus Hospital in Karachi is all coming soon. Then we have Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed and Al Nahyan Medical Complex in Quetta. Uh, they have advertised medical physicists, uh, the jo jobs for medical physicists for mid career, um, but uh, I think they are still looking for it. So these are some of the future opportunities. In the future, they would have more opportunities as well. Uh, Nishtar Hospital is uh, planning, or, or actually they submitted a summary, uh, like my institute, they submitted a summary for uh, medical physics jobs uh, for, for Nishtar Hospital, like hired through the Public Service Commission of Punjab uh, and under Punjab government. They, as soon as the summary would be approved, they would uh, advertise it and get someone hired through Public Service Commission. Then uh, in academic medical physics, you have very good opportunity coming in. Institute of Physics at the Islamic University of Bahawalpur. I'm going to share the details uh, later on. So uh, these are the career opportunities. I started with those because uh, there's no point in studying when you don't have an idea of jobs. So let's go through the education now. It's about graduate programs. Uh, PIAS, Pakistan Institute of Engineering and Applied Sciences, it's the only institution that has a structured uh, medical physics program like masters and PhD. This program was started on the recommendation of IEA in about uh, uh, like 20 years from now, uh, in 20 years uh, backwards, I think in 2001 or 2000, they started this program. 
This program is regularly reviewed by IAEA and you get full funding if you get hired through fellowship. They also offer uh, MS and PhD on self-finance basis, but uh, uh, you need to contact them for the details. Uh, several other universities, they offer physics or radiation physics graduate programs, and they offer some medical physics courses and research or thesis option for medical physics, uh, physics specialties. Then the, uh, the highlight of our graduate programs is the Islamic University of Bahawalpur IUB. Uh, they recently got approved for uh, Institute of Physics that is under establishment. And in that Institute of Physics, I think first time in Pakistan, they're going to have four departments related to medical physics. So those four departments, they would have their undergraduate programs um, maybe, but they would definitely have uh, graduate programs like specialized masters in those four disciplines. I think one of them is probably imaging, the other one is therapeutic. So probably four uh, different departments. Uh, so the potential for uh, medical physics focused graduate programs. Then Bahaudin Zakriya University Multan, they also offer like uh, MSc or MS in applied physics and you can opt for some medical physics courses. Then Comsex University, uh, Islamabad and Lahore, University of Karachi, UET Lahore, uh, NED, uh, and other institutes like that, they offer uh, physics degree programs with the focus on medical physics. Moving on, um, you also have traineeships and on-job training opportunities. AKUH has a very well-reputed two-year traineeship program. It comprises of coursework, project, and rotations as a trainee medical physicist. You uh, join in the, their certificate program after uh, you pass a test and you get an interview. And after that, uh, you get inducted as a trainee medical phys physicist for two years. Following the two years, you don't have a job opportunity, but some of the trainees, they manage to get a job at Aga Khan University Hospital as well. But even if you don't get a job at AKU, most of other hospitals, they welcome you to join their uh, setup if you have a good training from uh, a good institute like AKUH. Then Shoka Khanam also offers a uh, one-year on-job traineeship uh, induction program. Uh, you can also join that. And they have they are unique in a sense that they are the only, or maybe they are the first one to introduce a structured medical physics uh, job. So they have like a trainee uh, medical physicist and then medical physicist, junior medical physicist, then medical physicist, then senior, then deputy chief and chief. So in private sector, they are the only one to, uh, to offer that structured career in medical physics. In uh, public sector, uh, in, in federal government, you have Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission. They also have a very structured, very good job structure. Uh, and uh, in other hospitals like SAUT and some other hospitals, they offer like six months to one year on job training. Usually that is unstructured, but you can structure it yourself by following different guidelines. I would share about that later on. So residency and certification is still in the planning phase. Pakistan is working with IAEA, mainly PIAS uh, or PAC. They are uh, working with IAEA and private and uh, public sector hospitals to plan a residency. Basically, residency is a structured training, like a practical training that you get on your job to be a medical physicist. Um, and then uh, following residency, you appear in an exam for certification. Uh, in that exam, uh, you have like a part one, uh, usually, where you uh, like get uh, a test of your basic physics skills, mainly. Uh, then you have a part two where you usually uh, are tested for medical physics uh, skills, like it, it is a written exam. Uh, then your third exam is usually an oral exam or an interview. So this kind of certification, it provides you credentials for working as a medical physicist. You are certified to work as a medical physicist. This is very common in, in the developed countries. In Pakistan, unfortunately, we don't have any certification board until now, but uh, it is in planning. As soon as we have residency, then following that, we would have a certification program, hopefully. Um, medical physicists are usually inclined to get a certification from IMPCB, that is International Medical Physics Certification Board. Um, and it is being uh, an expectation of reputed hospitals as well. Like if you have IMPCB certification, some of hospitals, they might prefer to hire you. And that is only possible after you have a two years uh, like experience. Um, and uh, if we now look at the equipment that is available, like as a medical physicist, you work with equipment, right? So you work uh, on the precision and accuracy uh, for uh, maintaining or for, for verifying the quality and safety of that equipment. Uh, so we would go through diagnostic and uh, uh, 
and uh, I think uh, you can uh, work with different machines. Uh, the big centers like AKU, uh, Shokat Hanam Memorial uh, Hospital, and uh, uh, other centers like that, they, they have like Cyclotron and PET. Uh, you can just Google it to find the details about it. MRI and CT scan is almost available everywhere. Uh, gamma cameras, like scintigraphic procedures, they are available widely. Some of the centers, they also have like SPECT scan, DEXA scan, and other facilities like that. The Technetium 99M generators, this, this is basically a nuclear medicine, uh, which emits radiation, and those radiations are detected at a gamma camera. This is a diagnostic procedure. Uh, this is uh, manufactured locally by Penn State. Some of the hospitals these, uh, get these uh, sources from Turkey, from uh, uh, like Sweden, Switzerland, from other places like that. Uh, so this is the status of diagnostic equipment. In terms of linear, uh, the uh, RT equipment, linear accelerator is one of the most used uh, uh, radiotherapy equipment. And also we still have like cobalt-60 uh, radioactive source for teletherapy for as a source of like radiation to, uh, to kill the tum uh, tumors and cancer cells. Uh, for linear accelerators, a variant is the main stakeholder uh, taking most of the job share. Uh, the market share. Uh, we have Halcyon in three of the centers. Uh, sorry, this is the added as one here, but now we have like Halcyon in three of the centers. Two of them are in Karachi. One of them is in Lahore. Uh, the one in Lahore is uh, soon commissioning the machine and then they will start using the Halcyon. Uh, but two of them are in Karachi in Zaldin Hospital. And I think the, uh, the second one is in uh, Kiran Hospital in Atomic Energy Commission. We have uh, two beam in most of the centers, not, not in the two, but I think three or four of the centers now have true beam. Uh, Al Khan University Hospital, Shah Khanam, Salim Memorial, and I think some other centers, they might have uh, plans or they might have uh, already ordered uh, the true beam. Um, it is usually recommended that you should have a pair of Linux, any Linux, you should have a pair so that if one of them is not functioning, the other one uh, should work as a backup uh, machine so that your patient uh, treatment is not uh, disturbed. The C Linux IX uh, and C Linux DHX, this is, these are models for variant uh, equipment uh, like 2100, 2300. It is available at several centers, energy ranges. Uh, from uh, 6 to 18 MV uh, and 6 to 22 MEV. Like you have photon energies from 6 to 18 and electron energies from 6 to 22 MeV. Then there's an old machine uh, from uh, Varian that is unique. Uh, we also have uh, some machines uh, at some places from Alecta. This is a competitor of Varian. Uh, the models are Synergy and Precise. Other RT equipments um, include Cobalt 60, as we discussed previously. Uh, some of them, they uh, upgrade their Cobalt 60 to get a treatment planning system with it. Uh, and some, some of them, they also get like MLCs. These are some of the technicalities that you only know when you uh, start to get working in the, in the hospital. So I would just skip those. Uh, the other machines that are available in Pakistan uh, include tomotherapy. This is just like CT, but with the therapy beam. So you have like uh, not computed tomography, but computed tomotherapy, you could say. So it's called tomotherapy. And you have cyber knife where you have multiple sources going around the patient. Um, it can use, uh, it can be used for radio surgery, like you do surgery with radiations. Then we have Electa Gamma Knife, where you have like all 60 sources uh, at uh, different angles from the patient. Uh, and this is what this one is used for uh, mainly the brain uh, uh, tumors. Uh, we also have uh, an intra-beam, IORT, uh, which is intraoperative radiotherapy. You use radiations uh, while doing a surgery. Uh, this is in one of the center, although it's not, not very functional. HDR brachytherapy is also available at a few of the centers like AKU, um, Shokat Khanam, Shifa, SIUT. I think most of the hospitals, they, the big hospitals, they have it. Uh, in terms of simulation uh, for external beam radiation therapy, some of the hospitals, they use CT, uh, but some of them also have like uh, radiography or ex simple x-ray like uh, 2D simulators. Future plans uh, include um, in terms of graduate programs, some of the universities, they are planning to offer the specialized uh, graduate programs in medical physics, or at least a specialization uh, when you have like physics uh, graduate program and you uh, want to specialize in medical physics. The residency is still in planning phase. In terms of equipment, uh, the future plans include the MR-based Linux, like Linux and MR, those two technologies are combined. Proton therapy, carbonine therapy, people are talking about it. Uh, there, is, there are like uh, controversies around them, but still they're in planning phase. 
there is a very uh, famous widespread movement of getting 200 linear accelerator uh, uh, machines for Pakistan. This is also voiced by some leaders. People are working on uh, getting 200 Linux. I think we might need even more, but 200 is the least number that we should aim for now. The opportunities abroad, uh, if you want to go abroad for studying and then come back and serve in Pakistan, these are some of the opportunities. Uh, I am just listing here, but not uh, going through those. Uh, if you have any question, just hit me up via WhatsApp or email, and I will be happy to help you. The failure modes and effects analysis. This is a project that I am working on. Uh, failure modes and effects analysis is basically a technique. Engineers are usually familiar with it. It uh, is mainly a prospective technique where you think of any failure mode, like you think that, okay, this bad can happen. Then you plan uh, about uh, how to manage it. Like, let's say if you are going on a bike from your home to, uh, to another city, like 100, 100 kilometers away, then you would check the mobile aisle, the engine aisle, you would check the fuel in it, you would, your, your brain would work and it would tell you, oh, your fuel can get end. So this is a failure mode. So this is a technique that we use in medical physics and the future of medical physics actually lies in FMEA technique. You think of what can go wrong, like what failure can occur, and then you plan accordingly. So for medical physics career, there are also like failure modes. Like let's say uh, uh, if uh, you are planning for a graduate uh, degree in medical physics, but you, you, uh, you choose the program wrongly, let's say you choose physics program where there is no medical physics, then definitely you would not uh, uh, be able to get a structured uh, graduate education, but you would still be able to get into medical physics. This is one of the failure modes. Um, then uh, another thing is like incomplete or incorrect application package. Let's say you are applying to PIAS and you don't submit your application completely, uh, you would uh, either be contacted by their registration branch and uh, they would ask you to, um, to correct it or you would lose your opportunity for that specific year. So these are different failure modes that can occur. Um, and also uh, some other things uh, is, uh, includes like if you're unable to continue research, let's say you uh, have a lack of interest in research or if you have a lack of uh, equipment, uh, then you would uh, not be able to do research, but don't worry, medical physics um, uh, is a branch where even if you have no aptitude for research, you can still work if you have good aptitude for applied uh, sciences. Like if you want to apply things, if you don't have time to write up, if you don't want to uh, invent something, still you can work here, but having, a, having an aptitude for research, it always helps in medical physics. So I'm just skipping that for now. Uh, the take home message from this presentation is that don't be a physicist by luck and happenstance. Like by luck, I mean like you know someone uh, who is uh, like a big leader or who is uh, someone with authority and that someone, uh, they offer you a position um, like even if you're unqualified. So that is your luck. You become a physicist by, by luck. The second thing is you happen to be a, uh, a physicist. Let's say you are a a physicist and you get hired in a job uh, with a different uh, title, like let's say you were hired as a, a physicist in, to work in a nuclear power plant for some other physics uh, uh, like uh, prospects, not medical physics. And you now the, your, your uh, director or your head of the department, they attach you to the medical physics or health physics uh, part. Now you would, uh, uh, you would happen to be a medical physicist, but you don't have interest in it. So only uh, the happenstance and luck would only help you if you have an interest in medical physics, if you have aptitude of uh, medical physics. Uh, if you want to know the uh, consequences of being a medical physics by happenstance, uh, just Google it um, uh, by, uh, by the name Columbus, Ohio incident, and you would come to know about what can go wrong. So basically um, in, in that incident, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the physicist, he used a linear graph paper instead of the log linear graph paper for cobalt 60, uh, uh, the, the activity calculation, and that was a disaster. Now, if you want to make yourself uh, sellable, uh, then your education would definitely be a big thing. Like if you have an MSc or BS, uh, or you, if, if you have an MS, uh, that would make you sellable. Uh, people would be willing and happy to hire you. If you have a PhD, 
uh, you would ideally you should be preferred, but there are dilemmas with PhDs as well. Sometimes the PhDs they have higher expectation for salary which the hospitals cannot afford, or sometimes uh, the hospitals uh, they just don't like to hire PhD uh, because of their budget or any other reason. So there are dilemmas with PhD. So if you're doing PhD, do it for for your for your own satisfaction. Don't do it like for for uh, for a career advancement uh, in Pakistan. Although it sometimes it, it, it might help even in career. Uh, for medical physics, some very basic training would also make you sellable, like morning uh, quality assurance of LENAC, basic dosimetry, independent recalibrating a LENAC. These are those skills. If you know them, uh, like uh, if, if you uh, get an internship or a traineeship uh, with someone uh, for three, four months or six months, and you learn these things, then you are uh, at a better position from someone who doesn't know anything. Uh, then your attitude um, would definitely make you sellable. If you like to take on challenges, uh, then medical physics career is for you. Personal presentation is also uh, like to some extent it, it, it matters. Communication skills also help uh, in making you sellable. Uh, some of my other presentations um, besides this topic, they include ethics, professionalism and evolution in medical physics education, practice and research. This was presented at AEMC Karachi. Professional development and higher education opportunities for medical physics professionals in Pakistan. This was for mid-career medical physicists. It was presented at Zaldin University Hospital. You can get these presentations either from those organizers or you can uh, contact me if you uh, are interested in those two topics. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, I would be happy to answer. Uh, I think there is some problem with my speakers. Let me uh, see that if I am able to... Uh, resolve it. You can, uh, meanwhile, you can ask the questions in, in the chat as well, um, in the Zoom chat. And I would be happy, happy to answer. Uh, I think I'm not able to, to hear um, any voice, but uh, I should be able to. Um, uh, participant can put their questions on the chat box mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Shabazz will answer. So, Shabas, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I think I, I can hear you. Uh, okay. now it is, so, uh, participants can unmute themselves if they want to ask a question directly. Yeah. I am putting my screen on full now. Or these contact details if anybody is interested in. Or uh, I will uh, happy to have uh, Dr. Sayyid Mansoor Nakwi and uh, Mr. Talat Mahmood as well. They are here. If they want to discuss anything related to medical physics professional in Pakistan, if they want to give some comments, they are uh, welcome. Okay, so the very first question that I see here is that uh, someone, if uh, I'm willing to get admission in abroad, like UK, which university is good for me there in UK for being a medical physicist. Okay, so for UK, if you want in just an academic component, then there is a list of universities. Uh, I think only very few universities, they offer uh, masters in medical physics. Uh, there is a very good uh, program in, in uh, uh, being a medical physicist in UK, which is scientist training program, STP. So um, if uh, you get, if you manage to get hired through uh, STP, the scientist training program, uh, you would get a master's plus you would get a training. Uh, both of them would be funded. You would be on job and you would get masters as well as uh, uh, the training. Uh, this is offered through NHS, the National Health Service. You can, uh, you can just uh, uh, go through that one and uh, you can get uh, um, like education as well as training. Um, Okay, yes, I'm sorry. I think I uh, highlighted that Aga Khan University Hospital is, uh, it offers only radiotherapy. No, it, it does offer another training program as well. This is Diagnostic Radiology, Nuclear Medicine and Radiation Production Program. It is in Department of Radiology. Uh, both of them are advertised, I think, separately. And um, uh, they hire uh, one or two trainees every year. 
So for uh, for your contact for um, uh, Aga Khan University Hospital would be um, either the HR department or you can contact the medical physicists, uh, the senior physicists like uh, Abdul Qadir Jangda, uh, Sir Dr. Mansoor Nakhvi, um, Asad Yusuf Sahab and others. You can contact them for details about traineeship program. Okay, another question is, the certification program would be valid for foreign jobs or only valid in Pakistan. Okay, the beauty of medical physics is if you have a structured training anywhere, uh, it would definitely be counted towards your experience even in, in foreign. Like, let's say if you have a, a traineeship from AKU or if you have a master's from PAAS, that would definitely work anywhere. Uh, like, I know people who have AKU certificate uh, the two years training, and they managed to get job in Australia, in uh, um, I think in uh, uh, in AKU hospital uh, in Nairobi, Kenya, in uh, Dubai, or in other places. They are eligible. Like uh, people, they they manage to get the jobs, and also the PIAS graduates, they are all over the world. You can find them anywhere. So that means graduate programs as well as the traineeship programs, they are worth doing it, even if you want to go to uh, foreign countries. Uh, I think I can add a little bit in it actually. Uh, hello, I'm Talat. Yes, you're right. Sorry, uh, I think so. this is true, but um, as far as I can say about the, um, if you have any type of uh, you know certification program, uh, it definitely leads towards the um, uh, to, to to get a job. Um, there's a one few example in Australia recently has happened actually. There are three or four people are actually uh, come across from uh, one from Kenya from AKU. The guy was he's moved here in Australia. There's another guy who was working in somewhere in Peshawar. He moved in here. Akil his name, and there's another guy. Uh, in the process at the moment, so is already have got a you know uh, offer, but he's keep negotiating with the salary and things like that. So there are lots of people are actually moving in, but the only thing they have all of them has certification. Either it's an international board of radio, whatever the medical physics one, and there's another one HCPC from UK. So all these people are having some sort of um, certification. But if you have, that's what the uh, Shabazz brothers said, if you have some sort of structured program is definitely count because when you submit, for example, when you move in um, and if you want to get a certification from any other country like Australia or UK or US, so they considered your whatever you have done. They ask you your um, MSc program, they ask you what you have done in your, you know, your CPD points for the last five years. And this kind of stuff is quite helpful for them to give you, to find out where you sit in your, because they have a different level of exams. So they can maybe exempt few exams for you. The same thing happened in Australia, like for me. Thank you, Dr. Talat Saab for explaining and adding information over there. There is uh, uh, another question. Uh, that is about why does the medical physics career has not get much importance in our country uh, compared to abroad. I think the main reason is because uh, the career in medical physics in Pakistan is still progressing. We don't have a structured residency program yet and we don't have a certification program yet and even if we follow the IMPCB the International Medical Physics Certification Board uh, certification like if let's say from uh, next year if the hospitals require everyone to uh, be IMPC certified there are issues with it like the certification itself is very expensive then you have to spare time for studying you have to travel to other countries to uh, to uh, appear in the oral exam the part one and part two I think they they are uh, attend attemptable online as well but there is a cost element as well so you have to pay for the exam you have to spare time for studying so uh, once uh, the residency and certification it comes uh, into effect in Pakistan the medical physics career would definitely excel and it would definitely get um, more importance uh, similar to the uh, abroad one of uh, senior medical physicists he was uh, discussing with me on the same issue and he said People here in Pakistan, unfortunately, they can they are willing to buy a machine of 45 crore Pakistani rupees, but they are not willing to pay like two, three lakhs to a medical physicist. That is a dilemma, but uh, I personally think um, 
uh, we we should uh, still not give up. Uh, keep trying. You would definitely get a good job if you have aptitude, and you would definitely be able to negotiate a very good salary. And you are the one who would uh, actually um, make yourself important. Like you, you know your worth, and then you would be uh, the one who would be introducing medical physics to doctors, to decision makers, to HR, to everybody. And at some stage, they would tell you that without a medical physicist, radiotherapy cannot run. And then they, they, that would be the time when they would be in a position to, or to uh, realize the importance of medical physics. Uh, so if there is any other question, uh, that is welcome to. Uh, just you can just unmute yourself and ask. In the meantime, there is no question, so I was just uh, to add a few things in it actually, um, because uh, I'm actually going to present soon. One of the I uh, have to coordinate with Asad about this, and maybe I think so it's the next November sometime. If I'm not wrong, Asad. Yes, it's 7 November. Yes, I'm actually going to present what are the, I've actually written a paper on it actually, what are the resources and uh, history of the medical physics in Pakistan. So I have actually come lots of things um, and I actually collected all the data in this particular paper. So I was presenting this paper actually on the 7th. So it, uh, I will encourage everyone to join. And I also, not only this one, I also proposed a structured that how you can make your medical physics a structured program. And then if it is a structure, then it could be automatically recognized by the different uh, organization. Like for example, ACPSEM, Australian College of Medical Physicists, they have actually invited from AAPM to assess their certification pro programs. And the comments which has come across from the ACPSEM, they said uh, WAPM, they said this is the one of the highly structured program in the world because they have actually reviewed lots of different structured programs for medical physics training uh, and education, but they found this is the one of the best one. So <clears throat> not only this one, but it's also there is a similar structure program is actually running by IAEA, uh, which I'm actually working initially. I think so there was an app. Uh, discussion happened long time back when they actually nominated me as an editorial board member of this particular project. So I'm actually doing lots of work for the IAEA at the moment. So this is almost a similar structured program which is actually set up in Australia because most of the uh, editorial board member is actually from Australia. So uh, hopefully uh, you have any question, you can talk to me on, uh, on 7th of November, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, the, can you share the details about the certification program uh, from IAEA uh, and also from the one that, I, that AAPM commented on that this is the best one? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed it. Ah, no worries. I will I will send you the uh, the the reports which the WAPM has actually sent. I think so it should be on available on WAP, uh, ACPSEM website. I will I will go and review it uh, because if it is not there, maybe the one of the um, you know the uh, the quarterly they send um, a newsletter. It should be in that one most okay. likely if it is not there. But anyway, I'll, I will share with you, find out, and then I will share with you. They have actually, they not only this one, at the same time, they also criticize as well, not only say that the best one, but also, also there are a few flaws in the in the system, which we uh, wish they have actually come across. So, sure. yeah. Uh, thank you. There is another question uh, here, is that uh, the trainee program after graduation, they are good, but those trainees don't have any recognized degree about their training. Okay, so uh, I would say um, you are right in, in a sense that they don't have a degree, but uh, the traineeship itself and the experience that you get uh, in that training, that is worth doing it. So don't hold yourself from uh, getting into a traineeship program. Uh, you must uh, um, grab the opportunity if you have an interest in medical physics. 
people from AKU, um, they, uh, they, uh, from AKU and from uh, Shokat Khanam and SIUT as well, they managed to get uh, jobs uh, abroad based on that certification uh, or traineeship program, uh, as well as just based on the experience that they get over there. Like they learn the things, then they get the international certification based on that experience. So graduate degree is important, uh, but traineeship is also important. The practical training is also important. Uh, secondly, one of the other things which normally what I do actually, I have uh, run lots of um, interview um, session for the different medical physics. But normally, most of the physicists, they contact me when they have an interview. So I actually normally try to teach them how you have to answer the questions in the interview, because this is the one of the critical things that people don't understand the concept, what the people in a broad look, looking at it, what kind of um, answer they are looking for and what you have to, how you want to answer, because it's a very simple question. They ask you, they, for example, in the morning, the, you know, the linear accelerator, they are doing a morning QA and they found that the 5% output is out. So what will be your answer? So it, some people say, oh yeah, I will do the second check in the solar water, but you didn't have come across. There are so many things you have to do it beforehand if you're going to check only the that it's a very simple simple question but it's a quite complicated answer for it it's not very simple but that's what i'm saying this kind of the question they ask you and they they, they, they want to know how much you are actually in know and what are the your routine work is and how you handle this kind of a situation in your current department so if anyone has any interview call please uh, contact me, my email is there, and we can maybe have a session, few sessions, and then we can give us a feedback that how you can answer these questions, sort of. And I have a bank of questions basically, uh, which I actually generated because different, when, whenever at the end of the interview, I asked the person, please send me your uh, questions, what you have you know, asked for, and they send it to me. And then I actually tried to set up as a model answer for these questions. And then it will be helpful for me to be increase the bank of the questions. Uh, thank you, Dr. Talitsab, for that offer. Just to add here, in US, uh, people, they charge for mock interviews. So like for oral, if you're going to appear in an oral exam or an interview, people would charge to, uh, to train you for an interview. You, so every, anyone who want to avail the offer from uh, Dr. Talat, uh, and from other seniors uh, on this uh, platform, the MPTF or uh, POMP, Pakistan Organization of Medical Physicists. So just, just establish contact with someone and you would definitely get help. This is the beauty of this uh, profession. Uh, I am just adding uh, one more thing here. Uh, I keep sharing about Fulbright Scholarship Program on the platform. Uh, this is a very good program and you have a golden opportunity to, uh, to enter uh, in medical physics, if you grab to, uh, if you manage to grab the Fulbright scholarship, I am appearing in their um, their application uh, review process. Like the people who applied Fulbright, I am part of the review uh, panel, and also I appear in the interview panels. But I have not seen many people uh, opting for medical physics. So that is an opportunity for you. Apply for it, and you would definitely get it if your application is very well structured. I'm also available to help on that front as well. And uh, also uh, the internships and traineeships, if you contact with any medical physicists in, from a good hospital, uh, they might be willing to allow you for unpaid internships. Right now at uh, Nishtar Hospital, we also have, have uh, such opportunity. If someone wants to get an attachment for a month or two or three, uh, they can come here. We are unable to offer the financial support or any benefits, uh, unluckily, but uh, we welcome anyone to learn uh, medical physics. Um. Thank you very much, Mr. Shabazz. Thank you very much, Mr. Talat. And uh, we have a very good time and uh, it's quite uh, fruitful for all the young students if they are participating. Or uh, those who are, have, didn't got an opportunity to participate in the session, they can go to the YouTube channel and will found the recording and share with your uh, colleagues and friends. Thank you very much, Mr. Shabazz, for your time. And uh, we will going to have uh, a session with Mr. Talat on 7 November as uh, the I, 
uh, International Day of Medical Physics is coming, and uh, the this year theme is uh, the medical physics with the sustainable healthcare. Uh, so the theme reflects the education, the continuous education of medical uh, physics. It's quite important, and this is what we are emphasizing on that day, uh, an online symposium. So join us on that day as well. And thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Sarasad. Uh, you uh, managed this activity, and um, uh, I am uh, sorry for being late in this uh, endeavor for presenting on this uh, platform, the MPTF. I really appreciate the efforts of uh, Asad Yusuf and others from AKU and from other hospitals uh, in arranging such uh, beautiful, uh, such enriching activities uh, through MPTF platform. And I'm available for any collaboration with uh, anyone um, through MPTF and uh, without it as well. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.